Hey everyone, how's it going? Elliot here again. In today's video, we are going to be checking out something extremely cool. This is quite possibly one of the most advanced handhelds we're ever going to look on the channel. I don't think anything more advanced has come out than this. This is very, very specific. Um, it's not like you're emulating things on a PlayStation or uh, PS Vita rather or anything like that. This is a specific thing designed for very, very extreme handheld gamers. And uh, yeah, so without any further ado, let's get into it. So this is the Clockwork Game Shell Redefined Portable Game Console. Maybe it's meant to be like Redefined Portable? I don't know, who, who knows? You have a couple of statistics here on the front. You have a quad-core um, Cortex A7 CPU. It's got Wi-Fi built in on board, which is always very handy. Programmable keyboard and a Linux kernel 4.1 supported. So very, very interesting. We kind of have this... Um, quite retro, three-dimensional, um, clear view of the uh, game shell there. You've got two to the side and the front. Clockworkpie.com. This was very, very kindly sent to me by uh, Clockwork, uh, the guys over at Clockwork. So thank you very much to them. However, this has not been paid, so I'll be honest during this review. Um, I will tell you if it is good, if it is bad, and I won't be biased for any reason. I'm hoping to see something good, although I don't think I'm going to be disappointed. So the box is very, very high quality. It's just a, uh, a piece of dyed kind of cardboard, but they've also dyed the inside. So just looks very, very professional here. So you can see this whole thing kind of has, you can see the whole thing kind of has this um, sort of individual design here where you've got these individual um, boxes with individual things in there, which is really, really cool. We're going to take all of those out. I believe that's everything in the box, which is good. We've got a couple of other things over here. Now, one thing I know about this is that it's a modular um, design. So everything kind of has its own place and it's all can, it can be taken apart and stripped apart and um, kind of moved around and changed into different things. It looks like we've got some sort of potentially stickers over here as well if you want to customize your bits and bobs. You've got a kind of cassette one, which I really, really like. Is that Leonardo da Vinci? Could be something like that. Um, some standard like kind of mini disc type looking things. Really, really cool. And then you've got your um, generic stuff down there and a couple of cool clockwork stickers. So that's cool. We've got a manual, which will probably be helpful. Hopefully there's not going to be too much um, programming involved on this because a lot of the things I review are basically just ready to go. You turn them on and off you go. But I think this is probably meant to be aimed at a slightly more um, advanced user than just that. So let's have a look. So in the first box, let's have a look at what we have. Um, as I said, everything is kind of going to be modular, so it's going to have its own place. Looks like this is the buttons. So you have your buttons here. There's the membrane. Um, so that looks like it's your kind of just regular D-pad action buttons. And then we have a couple of casings here. And there's our D-pad, which doesn't look like it's the same size as anything that we've seen before. These two pieces on the side lock the case together, and then you've got your regular action buttons up there. But it's really nice that you get this kind of build. Um, that was one thing that they did on the Odroid Go, which I found was just a really nice touch. Of course, some people are gonna wanna you know, do things themselves. Um, others are just gonna wanna turn it on and get it going. So hopefully they've got the right balance of that, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, in this one, it looks like we have the screen, the LED, uh, LCD display, sorry. Um, hopefully that's going to be nice and high quality. There's nothing worse than having a good handheld with a low-res screen. Um, and then that potentially is our motherboard right there. Looks like it could be. There's a lot of chips and uh, sockets on there. And here is a um, controller board as well. So all in anti-static bags, which looks like there's not going to be a lot left. So I imagine one of these is going to contain some housing. Here we go. There's your standard shell color. Oh, that is absolutely gorgeous. That is definitely the one that I'll be using, that kind of off-white um, traditional one. And then we've got a slightly more clear one with a gap on the back there. I'm not sure what that's for because it doesn't take any cartridges, but that's probably the design that I'll go for. Delve a little bit deeper and see if there's anything else. And in here we have, ooh, attention. 
electrostatic sensitive devices. Hmm. Okay, what do we have in here? Oh, so there's a micro SD card included and it's an eight gigabyte SanDisk Ultra. So this looks like we have a battery and some connectors for some LEDs potentially, or are they buttons? Oh, they're buttons, okay. And then that's just gonna be for the battery. That's the socket there for the battery. And this is some more connectors along with that SD card that I was talking about. And there's one more box. I'm really not sure what else they could cram in here, but they've done a good bloody job at the moment. There we go, so it's just another, um, another different type of shell here with a load of buttons on the back, which or holes. I'm not sure what that is. It could just be a different design with like some grip or something, but I'm sure it will make sense as we go. But my goodness, we have a lot of stuff on the table. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and assemble it all. This isn't going to be a tutorial. Um, it's just going to be a kind of uh, hands-on review. So let's go ahead and assemble it. Okay, and about 15 to 20 minutes later, I had a little bit of faffing around because I probably didn't read the instructions properly, although they are actually really, really um, well done. Very, very high quality um, drawings. Not a lot of writing, which is nice. It just means you can kind of crack on with it. Um, as I said, though, I managed to screw it up a couple of different times. I don't think the buttons are fully um, in properly because um, some of them press really, really well. And then on the other hand, some of them don't. This whole thing feels extremely high quality. Um, as you saw at me at the end there, in order to actually just take this thing apart, you'd merely just twist these two little things on the side, pop them off, like so, and then you have access to everything again. But I'm not going to do that though because uh, the buttons, think of the buttons. So you just twist them on, which I think is just such an innovative design. It means that you, know, you just don't need a lot in order to put this together, or if you need to switch something out quickly, you don't need any screws. This this didn't require any screwdrivers at all. Um, the Odroid Go required one Phillips, this did not. So all I have done is put this together. I have not done anything else. Let's go ahead and turn it on. We've got the on button at the top up there. And whilst it's doing its thing, we'll have a quick look around the console. So on the top, you have a micro USB port for charging. Um, you can see the motherboard there and the battery. The reflections are going to make this thing focus crazy. You've got your D-pad. You've got a menu button. You've got a shift button. You've got a select, start, and you've also got volume as well. I imagine if you press shift and volume, that probably sorts that out. So I've turned the ISO down. Let's go ahead and uh, have a look at what's on here. So right off the bat, we have settings. Um, so you've got screen brightness. In fact, we should probably turn that down a bit so you can see the screen a bit better. Um, storage shows you the storage. So obviously this thing has pre-installed software on it. Update, so you can check for an update. You can actually uh, connect it to Wi-Fi. So if I go onto settings and click Wi-Fi, there you go, you can see the different Wi-Fi's here. It shows, the, it shows you the signal strength. Uh, this thing's running off of Linux um, and it's quad core. I haven't discovered a single bit of lag at all. It's absolutely phenomenal. Um, I did see that there is already a game pre-installed on here, so I think what we should probably have a quickly check out is if there's any retro games on here. So we've got the... No, it doesn't look like there is going to be anything at all. Um, hmm, let's go back onto the menu then. And... Okay, so we're going to have to put the games on ourselves, but let's have a look at Cave Story first. Um, just because I saw it before. If we go ahead and press Shift... See if we can get the volume to work in. Work, rather. There we go. And then it has a little uh, piece on the front there which tells you the decibels. Not the loudest of speakers, but you do have a headphone jack. A lot of people complained about the Odroid Go not having a headphone jack. Well, this does, so calm yourselves. 
Look at the quality of that screen. It's insane. I'm not even sure if the uh, camera can really translate that, but it's just gorgeous. But what I'm going to do is load some um, ROMs onto here, and I'm sure we might actually be able to do that over the um, internet, potentially. Free Doom. Ooh. It's actually Doom. So for all those people who are going to ask, does this thing run Doom? The answer is yes. So you don't need to ask me. Although I feel like I'm still going to get a million comments asking me if it runs Doom. It runs Doom, okay? So chill out. <laughs> and it runs Doom really, really well. So it's been about 48 hours since I shot that last clip. Um, I've had a lot of uh, time with this thing. Um, me and my friend John uh, sat down probably for about two and a half hours trying to get this thing um, to load games and play. It might just be because this thing hasn't um, properly been released yet. It's actually only available on like a Kickstarter um, and even then I think that's now over. So now they're just having to um, build up their inventory and then they'll start selling the retail ones which is the one that I have unboxed today. All right and here is Golden Axe then for the MAME Arcade. Um, I'm not entirely sure which version of Golden Axe this is going to be. I'm not sure how you insert a coin. Oh, select potentially. There we go. Okay, and then you select your player. I haven't experienced any lag at all um, when playing this game. Um, it seems to be um, pretty flawless, to be honest. This isn't exactly a test of its um, capabilities, though, obviously. So let's have a look at some Game Boy games. So we go into Retro Games and then MGBA, uh, enter. And then we have Super Mario Kart in here and Zelda Link to the Past. So let's go ahead and try Super Mario Kart. I'm imagining these are going to map to the shoulder buttons, but it also does come with a bracket that you can put um, some buttons on the back. Um, so how do you use your shoulder buttons? Okay, so it doesn't seem that the um, it doesn't seem like these shoulder buttons are actually already mapped on there. You might have to um, plug them in to play that, but it works amazing. There's just is no lag at all. It's just ridiculous. So let's have a look at another ROM. Then we'll have a look at uh, Rockman for the NES. which is of course Mega Man. So you press start. This game is incredibly difficult from what I can remember. I mean, it's just a different level of, um, of quality compared to some of the other things that we've seen before. In order to get Game Boy games, you have to go into RetroArch. Now, I probably haven't loaded the calls onto this properly. Um, as I said, it isn't really for the, uh, the noob-hearted, um, or you have to be willing to learn how to use it at least. So if we go load core, oopsie, there we go, and then we press the Game Boy one. Now, we need to do load content. So you have to go through your file system until you can get to your um, games, which we've saved them here quite far down, and then Game Boy, and we'll go ahead and load Contra. And it just runs flawlessly. Honestly, this thing is probably one of the best um, emulators I've ever, ever seen. One of the best handheld consoles. It's just gonna be a real case of um, learning how to get the software on there right, which I think in time, or if you, if you know what you're doing, um, I think will become a lot easier. Um, you can load the games on through the phone and it has got Bluetooth on there as well. I'm just not entirely sure how to do that yet. Um, and I spent so long trying to work out how to show you guys for this video, but I just couldn't work out how to do it. If you'd like to check out any more details on this thing, I'll leave all the links down below. Thank you very much to Clockwork for sending this out to me and thank you to John for helping me um, put this thing together. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.